ma'am. Once again, can you say namaskar, good evening? I'm recording now. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this workshop. Namaste, namaskar. I'm honored to be here. Mm, <laughs> it's a privilege to welcome you here with a lot of namaskar. <laughs> a big namaskar. And a, and a very good hug to our favorite teacher <laughs> of this <laughs> workshop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Adipa, could you introduce Professor Beta today? I think you can read from your email I've sent to uh, uh, Professor Beta's uh, introduction. If you have received email just now at um, half past, I think six or quarter past six, I send the email. Uh, on behalf of the whole team and all the participants, I would like to welcome uh, Madam Berta. A very good morning, Madam. I hope there is good morning. So on behalf of all the participants and uh, respected convener, Ma'am, I would like to offer lots of uh, wishes of this warm good uh, morning. May this morning brings you lots of happiness, health and uh, victory and make it uh, remarkable in your life so this this is my wish for the day and i welcome you at the virtual platform for teaching us all and providing such a wonderful uh, learning full uh, bouquet of uh, uh, lots of uh, grammatical and communicative uh, devices and speeches so ma'am uh, on behalf of uh, all of us i welcome you here Thank you very much, Deepa. Can we hear some few a few words from Amar? Amar, are you there? <clears throat> can you Hello. speak something? Uh, what can I tell uh, about uh, Batra, ma'am? You know, uh, to tell about Batra, ma'am, is just uh, showing the deep, you know, the shan. And uh, in her guidance, uh, whatever we have, uh, we already studied about uh, Charles Dickens and uh, David Copperfield. Uh, but the way ma'am uh, taught us the pedagogy of the ma'am and uh, uh, particularly with the help of that the movie, that uh, was, that is marvelous. That just overcome, yeah, overwhelmed me. And so <laughs> I give thank you again. Uh, but uh, ma'am, uh, just for uh, one thing, uh, I would say, just uh, we were talking uh, about Batra ma'am yesterday, that uh, ma'am looks so nice, so beautiful. Uh, I think ma'am is the uh, just uh, 2.0 version of Clara Copperfield, I think, <laughs> if ma'am don't mind it. <laughs> uh, when she might be young, no? She might be young, yes, she yes. would be just like Clara uh, Copperfield. <laughs> <laughs> sort of clear up our field, yeah. um, so nice to have this and I would uh, like to thank my one of the friends, Pizharul Haq, he is also a teacher, senior secondary teacher and he sent me at uh, first this email uh, so, uh, so that I could join it uh, and thank everybody uh, and uh, Jessri ma'am and Joya ma'am and all, thank you. Thank, thank you, you Amar, thank you, thank you Deepa for uh, giving a few good recommendations and uh, appreciation to our Professor Bertha. And I would like to again highlight one of, a few of her um, achievements um, as a, a writer. Um, even her educational qualification, I would like to read once again, like how uh, she has been through her journey of uh, education and uh, participating then uh, imparting uh, education. Uh, she has given us a brief bio data. So let me just read so that others may also know whoever uh, is not here um, uh, in our uh, previous days of her workshop. So Professor Berta, she belongs to Argentina. Her full name is Berta Alivera Otero. So Berta, your first name is your original name. Means your, your, uh, uh, 
your name which you have uh, you are identified and alivera is your family name and otero is your surname is it so uh, yes 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 and i want to say that berta uh, means brilliant in german it's it has a german origin and a german orange oh my god <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, uh, yes. so uh, are you uh, from Germany or from Argentina or? No, 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 from Argentina. But my grandmother and, and grandfather lived in Spain. Otero is a uh, Marcel surname, and he uh, has a Gaelic origin uh, because in Galicia, Galicia was the the part of Spain. Mm -hmm. It was uh, near, you cross the channel and it's near uh, the British Isles. That's why in Ireland and Scotland they speak Gaelic in uh, mm -hmm. English with a Gaelic accent. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, and, and how yes. come you have been my, then to, to transatlantic? My, no, how my, my marriage. Been... Sorry, well. Actually, you got married in Argentina. Yes, and my, my husband's surname mm -hmm. is Salerno. Salerno. Mm -hmm. So we don't lose our uh, last names when we married. So mm -hmm. I am, my name is Berta Otero de Salerno, of oh. Salerno. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I use Berta Otero. Okay. Simply. Yeah, because it's quite rhythmic, Berta Otero. <laughs> <laughs> so which which is your first name and which is your family name it's very rhythmic when you articulate so her uh, she's actually became well known um, across um, english language teaching world and its fraternity because of her you know uh, her uh, um, maybe you may say the teach, uh, teaching uh, oh god just wait teaching of English for EGB first and second cycle. Uh, or, uh, Bata, could you explain what does it refer EGB first and second cycle? See, base, uh, generally basic education, uh, primary school, let's say primary school. Mm -hmm. And uh, what then, then what does it stand for third cycle? Third, that's also yeah. a, a primary, middle and high school? Yes, a high school is a second cycle or uh, how it, it is named there. Um, I don't remember <laughs> what is written in my CV. And um, could you also throw light on what do you mean by polymodal education? Because in your one. bio data you've written polymodal education. Well, polymodal because in that time when I got my degree, secondary school was divided in modal education for example uh, the ones that study biology the ones that study um, science uh, so that's why uh, th there were there there was an orient orientation for the students when they began for example they finish secondary school and they began um, the mm -hmm. medicine studies so they took the poly the, mo the modal biology and the ones who wants to study as uh, to be an accountant, they take the, the path of uh, the model of uh, accounting, perhaps. So how you uh, got, how did you, uh, how did you get the inspiration or how, well, what spark was there that you uh, thought to write a book uh, in teaching pedagogy, especially uh, while watching uh, this movie, David Copperfield? How you got this inspiration? Yes, it was my own experience because when I was uh, uh, studying at teaching training college, I couldn't finish uh, reading the book because it was 900 pages and I, I had to read. <laughs> so this was a debt. This was a debt left in my life. And when I encountered the movie divided in chunks of, of uh, 10 minutes each, I thought it was an excellent idea, a marvelous <laughs> idea to make a book and mm -hmm. to get the students to know Dickens in an, in an easy way. 
because a they, very they a very nice yeah. endeavor, Berta. Because I have also realized that this is the best way of making students read a book because no student likes to read Dickens and also Vanity Fair, Thackeray's famous novel, which again runs into more than 850 pages. So I think it's a very commendable thing that Berta did and I'm glad that uh, Jayashree is asking these questions because this is where the spark lay. Berta experienced difficulty in reading the novel and therefore she decided to write this workbook come class book for to be taught in class and students can do their homework also very nice yes, hearing you Berta yes Jayashree please go ahead sorry for the interruption no ma'am there's not uh, you are just supporting our uh, interview that we are taking from uh, uh, Professor Berta, because she has been teaching, teaching, and we didn't uh, uh, had a time to just probe into her uh, journey of uh, education and her uh, experiences. Uh, Professor Berta, there is another question to you that you uh, had done the course, major course in uh, phonology, in phonology. Yes. So. Yes. Oh, why did you think or why did, uh, why did you try to uh, take up this course initially in your career rather than uh, taking any other career? What, what made you feel that phonology teaching uh, and pedagogy is primarily important or, uh, for your career? Yes, it is. But it was my own experience also because I had problems with pronunciations and that's why I wanted to know more and to improve. And um, making doing that course uh, give me the tools to, to know better and to articulate my mouth with the sounds and to pronounce it, it, it better. So, have you uh, felt that uh, in the, when you are taking the course of business English, is it necessary to also make students aware of phonology? Because later yes, on, yes. you... Uh, uh, phonology is very important because it's communication. They are going to speak with their, their clients and they are going to make them understood. Um, it's very, very, very important. They have to... Uh, teachers have to uh, teach sounds, sounds and how to pronounce them. Uh, yeah, I think, Berta, you are absolutely yeah. right. Phonology is a very important component in, uh, you know, in any course that we attend. And Berta, if, if I may ask, are you a Spanish citizen, a citizen of Spain? Yes, I speak Spanish. Spanish is my mother tongue. Yeah, but you resided or you taught in which country? Yes, yes. As I have uh, intermediate, intermediate students, I also provide the Spanish, uh, some Spanish, not all, not all English, but because they don't understand. If I speak all the time in English, they don't understand. But for the ones that are advanced, I try, I speak in Spanish. Uh, so but you are now, you are now teaching in Argentina. Yes, I am teaching in an inspection company to oh, adult wow. people, adult people. Yes. Okay. Yes. For example, they are going to have an audit uh, in late March, and they are preparing to speak with the auditor. And perhaps I will be there as an interpreter because if they cannot understand anything, I shall prompt them the day of the audit, for example. Uh, I would like to read a little more about Professor Berta. We'll just uh, have a pause. Uh, I will share with you a slide of uh, the introduction of Professor Berta. Just please wait. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I personally think Berta is a teacher's teacher. Yeah, because she has uh, forwarded her whatever uh, knowledge in the form of writings and her, uh, you may say, in her whatever she could uh, gather from her experiences or uh, shortcomings, she all put it down in the writing, and that's the best aspect to. Uh, put it forward and to extend to other uh, learners the same uh, issues if they come across. So she is in a way, you know, um, solving the precarity of uh, uh, others who are facing shortcomings. Uh, I would like to read uh, Professor Bertha's uh, little bit more introduction. Can you see on your screens? Uh, no? Not yet. Wait. All right, just wait. Now is it available on screen? Yes. Yes. Ah. Like, um, if we see her career, like actually she has not uh, very much uh, 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 drafted about her earlier life, uh, especially before 2008. But in some way she has mentioned that she has been into teaching career for 40 years. Uh, both privately and in uh, professional uh, scenario. Uh, but the first, she mentions that from May 2008 to 2014, she had worked as an English teacher in Instituto Educativo Argentino, teaching English to higher education students in the courses of hospitality management, tourism, public relations, environmental health, and safety and foreign trade. Uh, Professor Berta, I would like to uh, uh, ask you some something here. When you say that you have been teaching to hospitality management and tourism, so yes. what out of your English pedagogy preparation, you found the most important thing to start with these kind of uh, students who are into some market of hospitality and management? Yes, yes. I, I gave uh, them another materials, not my book, because my book is recently. When I was uh, uh, working there in that institute, I didn't, I haven't uh, wrote, written my book. Uh, I searched for any material related to tourism and to hotel management, how to make a uh, reservations for the people who wants to go uh, on holiday to a resort or to a hotel and how the receptionist um, talks to to the client to the um, the passengers the guests that arrive mm-hmm. at the hotel yes uh, so I, you, I, you, I, you, you focus other, more on conversational practices means you focus more on interactive sessions and uh, dialogue writing and conversational uh, you, practices you used to give spe- uh, with your yes, handouts. I was problems with conversation when I was studying English. That was mm-hmm. very difficult for me. That's why perhaps I think uh, people are like me, but they don't. You can encounter many type of, many any variety of students. Perhaps there are ones that uh, have difficulties in writing, and other ones in uh, uh, reading, listening. Okay. Uh, another aspect that is very important in your uh, uh, bio data is that you belong to the consultancy teacher staff of the online English teaching international platform, English Trainers Org, with its headquarters. Uh, of course, it was earlier, before pre-corona times that you had been there engaged. Uh, but I would like again to put you a question here, especially all these uh, who, whosoever here as attendees. Uh, could you throw light? What is this association English Trainers Org? Yes, it's a, an educational platform online um, based on Hamburg. Hamburg. But there, uh, 
Will, Will, uh, I don't remember his, his surname, uh, encountered my book and he liked it. So he proposed me to be part of the staff of the teachers. So I am in the staff, but I don't have students yet. Still, I, I don't have, uh, yet I don't have students because uh, I don't know why other teachers have, but I am new there. Mm. Uh, I think in October uh, last 2021, I got there. Not okay. not before the pandemic period. Mm -hmm. After the pandemic period, I entered there, and I, I, I am waiting for the students to come, and I will teach there. All right. So there is one student. I think some Deepika Sahu. Can you all? um just call her online she's uh, trying to call me on phone uh is she on screen available Deepika sahu yes ma'am why ma'am ma'am uh, ma i'll send you a message please check why why have you sent Actually, a message uh, um... <laughs> what's the issue ma'am we are actually we are in the so we haven't disturbed you. You continue with your work. Okay. So let's better. We'll start with your course, the last session that you have to deliver. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Of course. I would like to to Wait, tell you. Yeah, that... I think Professor Gaya wants to say something. Is it Chair. is it Tata's last session today or is it tomorrow? No, today. Only okay. today. Okay. Today. Okay. So, Berta, please share with us your email ID so that we can keep in touch. Yes, I will send it in the uh, WhatsApp group. Thank you, thank you. Yes, and I wanted to say that see, uh, my book is a workshop, um, a workbook of mm. the movie. Yes, you have the movie and you have the workbook to make activities and to learn more about the language. And I will uh, play uh, the other 10 minutes that continues with the, the movie. So I will sc um, share screen with you. Mm. Oh, no, no, sorry, this is. This is the book, and this is. Well, they are arriving at uh, Salen House School. Mm. It, it reminds us of uh, Coleridge, Samuel Taylor's Coleridge poem, Frost at Midnight, in which he men imagines that uh, he, uh, either in a flashback or about his son or the child, that he that the child is being educated in the closed walls, confined walls, uh, within the rooms and that poem Frost at Midnight reminds me of this kind of building where uh, in 18th century the students were educated uh, in Britain in this kind of closed walls with yes, strict it, discipline. It looks like a prison. They are prisoners. Mm -hmm. They are not students. Yeah. So pity <laughs> on the kids. Well, let's begin. Yeah. Yeah. 
around you. Those teeth are to be thoroughly Savior, James Steerforth. He was the oldest boy in the school, the son of a rich widow. Steerforth was afraid of nobody. Well, stand up, Traddle, for God's sake. bond of loyalty and gratitude. He did make life in that brutal place at least tolerable. He loved a story, but was far too idle, he said, to read himself. So I read to him. Then came a morning when I was summoned to Mr. Creakle in the pub. Master Copperfield? Yes, sir. You wanted in Mr. Creakle's partner. Come on, come on, hurry up. Come here and sit down, David. I have something to tell you, my child. You're too young to know how the world changes every day and the people in it pass away. But it's something we've all got to learn, David. Some of us, when we're very young. 
I grieve to have to tell you that I hear this morning that your mama is gravely ill. She is very dangerously ill. She is dead. A man that is born of a woman hath but a short time to live and is full of misery. He cometh up and is cut down like a flower. He fleeth as it were a shadow who never continueth in one day. In the midst of life, we are in death. After you went, she got more timid and frightened out. The hard word was like a blow to her. But still, she would love them two downstairs. Because she couldn't bear not to love anyone who was about her. At last, she says to me, I get English. Lay your good arm underneath my neck and turn me to you, for your face is going far off. <laughs> and she called on God to bless and protect her father's boy. <laughs> and then she died. <laughs> Like a child that had gone to sleep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I hope that you and Mr. Barkis will be very happy together, Peggy. Bless the boy. They do say he's a bit tight with money. So, take this now, Davy, before I'm Mrs. Barkis. A whole sermon! Shh! I can't. You take it and guard it well till the day you need it. House and contents, lock, stock and barrel. It's quick, and you'll get your price. Come. Uh, David, come here, boy. You have a disposition which requires a great deal of correcting. What it wants is to be crushed. And crushed it must be, and crushed it will be. Jane, leave this to me, if you please. I am not a rich man, David. Ah, yes, it finished. Well, let's go to the book. This is uh, the grammar section of the chapter before, two and enough, uh, two quantifiers, the exercises, and here comes the new chapter. Chapter fifth, where David is uh, sent to the boarding school. So we are not going to read because we are going to lose a lot of time. Only we are going to read the footnotes for you because perhaps there is something new or, or something interesting uh, for you. For example, you know me, boy, and this is uh, uh, Mr. Crickle tells this with a rising intonation um, because it is a question, but it's, it is not in a question form. So I wrote here, this is a declarative question, question without inversion of subject, auxiliary verb, 
and without auxiliary. This is commonly acceptable when speaking colloquially to show surprise. You need to write the question mark for not confusing it with a positive sentence and to pronounce it with a rising intonation in your voice. So, you know me, boy? He asks. But he is not putting a, in a question for with auxiliaries here. Okay, number 92, you will zoom, hey? So, here, see, yes. Do you have any question? Well, here, this uh, is said by Mr. Crickle because uh, he asks David, do you, you know me, boy? No, not, not yet, says, says uh, David. And uh, Mr. Crickle answers, you will soon, hey? The uses of will indicate certainty in the future because he's determined to show how he is. I'll tell you what I am. And here will is uh, for a spontaneous decision. Mm -hmm. The meaning is not future, but present. And it is generally used in the third person singular, I'll. Mm -hmm. And tartar, I'm a tartar, he said, Mr. Crickle says. A tartar is, I explained that is a savage, fierce or ill-tempered, tyrannic person. And it also comes from a, a country in Mongolia where Tartars lived. It was a nomad uh, tribe no, and very fierce, savage. Number 95 says, when I say I'll do a thing, I do it. Mr. Crickle uses the modal verb will with the modality of a threat here. Hmm? You will, Mr. Crickle. This is said by Mrs. Crickle. Again, the uses of will indicate certainty in the future. So she is sure that Mr. Crickle will show how he is and will impose uh, discipline to the Good student. Yeah, uh, can, um, do you want me to, to, do you want to ask me something? Kumar? Amar, Amar you want to ask something? No. Oh. I got it. Well, excellent. Uh, well, then you have here, uh, will it bite? Well, as ditto above, no? to indicate certainty in the future. Mr. Crickle uses the modal verb will to indicate the threat. So he puts the sign on David's back and uh, says, ah, no, he's showing... Um, his road, perhaps, and makes a blow to the desk and said, will it bite? This is a threat. The uses of will here. Then we have swine or swines. It, it, it can be plural or singular. Uh, it's uh, to mean that those students who were uh, attacking David uh, 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 were contempt contemptible or unpleasant person, people. And it's uh, the Spanish uh, translation provided. Let's look at the other footnotes. There is Chanchito here. Because, shut up, Chanchito! One of the students told Tony Traders who came to uh, help David. And here is, this is a Spanish element in the English discourse. This code switching or code mixing is commonly used in an informal style. Uh, publishing standards of style require that words from different languages must be written in italics. That's why it is written in italics. If you see in the text 99, is here. Yes. Shut up, Chanchito. Some boys are telling this to travel. Uh, well, then you have up you get, youngster. This is an inverted phrasal verb. Instead of saying get up, 
he says, up you get. Uh, the particle up is placed at the beginning to emphasize the action of getting up. And the other one, don't you worry. This is an imperative with a subject pronoun used that way for emphasis. Because you said, don't worry, seen, uh, without the, the subject. But here it is, don't you worry. Uh, the common imperative would be, don't worry. Then let's see what else is here. Come above. This is an euphemism for the verb to grow up. Well, this is when the priest is making a prayer uh, when Dora is being buried mm -hmm. at the funeral. So the priest uh, speaks metaphorically, alluding that human's life is very short. Uh, let, let's read, because perhaps it's confusing. A hundred and this. A man that is born of a woman, after a short time to live, he is full of misery. He comes above and is cut down like a flower. So, comes above means, um, what it says here, grow up. The human being grow up. But then death cuts him out from, from the earth, like a flower. No, this is metaphorically. Then here we have frightened like. This is a quotation from the original book. And this is this hyphenated adjective is literary and archaic. It is you, it is not, not used anymore nowadays. This is a hyphen here. Frightened like. Uh, uh, Pegotti was using this word when she was talking to David, uh, the last moments of Clara, and they all uh, cry after that. And uh, she tells, Pegotti tells David that she was a, a good woman and frightened like. Frightened like because she was afraid of Mr. Meston all the time. Uh, now, this, this one would love them too. The uses of good plus verb indicates a habit in the past. Mm -hmm. And this too, when he says too, he is referring, uh, she's referring to um, his husband who has died Mr. David Copperfield, uh, David's father, and another child she has had with Mr. Merston. She had another child, and this child uh, died. So let's read here. Peggotty refers to Clara's deceased husband, David's father, and to her other son she had had with Mr. Merston, and who died shortly afterwards his birth. Downstairs refers to being buried, buried under the ground. Mm -hmm. let's, let's read what uh, Pegotti says, says here. Uh, after you went, she got more timid and frightened like. A hard word was like a blow to her. Still, she could love them too downstairs because she couldn't bear not to love anyone who was about her. Mm -hmm. This downstairs is under the ground, buried, buried, sorry. Uh, well, and this one, the last one, couldn't bear not. Pegotti uses a double negative for emphasis and because she speaks non-standard -stand English due to her low social class and lack of education. She couldn't bear not. This, this is a double... Um, Negative. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, because she couldn't bear not to love anyone who was about her. Well, there are ma many um, in interesting things in the discourse because this is not adapted for uh, students. 
in textbooks, you have the text which is adapted. They take out complex things and they uh, begin showing you the very easy structures, grammar structures. But here we have all the discourse uh, and this is authentic material. Uh, well, here, let's see what's in the footnotes here. Sovereign. What is a sovereign? A sovereign is a gold coin of the United Kingdom equal to one pound sterling. They went out of circulation after 1940. And there is uh, another, un, uh, a figure of speech, which is a me merism. Uh, and this is, this is said by um, Mr. Merston's partner and says, um, put it all to action. Lock, stock, and barrel, meaning everything. No, everything, all the possessions of Clara are going to be sold. Sold. So that expresses totality, contrasting parts. It means everything. Let's see when uh, this man says this. 109. Mr. Quinion says this. After Clara's funeral in the living room of the rookery, he is speaking with Mr. Merston. No, don't grieve, don't grieve. It's a waste of time, much more. It's a waste of money. Put it all to auction, house and contents. Lock, stock and barrel. It's quick and you get your price. So here is emphasizing that Mr. Merston has to sell everything. So naming the parts, contrasting the totality of the things. This is a, an idiom or a, an expression, no, a figure of speech, a merism. And the, uh, here, what it wants is to be crushed. And crushed it must be, and crushed will be. This is said by Miss Merston when uh, David arrives and they are uh, they they have planned to take him to work, and Miss Merston uh, is talking figuratively here, and uses a play on words, meaning that David must be punished for his bad behavior. But <laughs> David is not be, um, misbehaving; she is a good boy, but they assume that he is a, a bad boy. A ver, let's see what uh, she says here. Uh, so Mr. Merston says, come. When he sees his stepson, he says complainingly, oh, David, come here, boy. You have a disposition which requires a great deal of correcting. And Jay Merston says, add more emphasis to the complaint. What it wants is to be crushed. And crushed it must be, and crushed will be. <laughs> so he wants, she wants to get rid of the child, crushing him, no? eliminating him. Well, uh, well, th then we have the glossary activities. We are going, we are not going to read this because you know all. Let's see then the questions. And let's see what is uh, the reading section here, the listening section. And for the, the true or false, we can do this because this is uh, short. Ah, the preposition, the grammar, the relevant grammar here is the preposition, the verb plus ing. Preposition plus verb plus ing. So anytime uh, there is a preposition, if the following word is a verb, you must to put it with ing. And Mr. Crickle, for example, told David, I have the happiness of knowing your stepfather. Here, of knowing. I'm famous for biting. For is the preposition and biting is the verb. And you're famous for biting. And Mr., uh, Mrs. Merston also told him, you have a disposition which require Mr. Merston. No, Miss, this is said, but here is a mistake here. I have to um, erase this S here because Mr. Merston says this. 
which requires a great deal of correcting. Well, you know that. So we are going to split this because there are exercises here. And what we can do is to watch another part, if you want, and we are we won't have time to deal with the other chapter. So perhaps I will leave uh, the conclusions of my book to you. And uh, I want to say also that the credit is not mine, it's the uh, Dickens and the producers of the movie. My intervention here is uh, I only made a tool for the students to work and for the students to learn and to practice. That's all. But, well, uh, but uh, yes? can I interrupt you? Please show us uh, the, the next clipping so yes. that we can again, you know, we'll feel happy. And here is a copy of my book, which I was trying to show you. It's called The Dickensian Scenario. Yes, I'm going to show you the following. Yeah, this please show us the track. And this is the book, which I'm Sorry. Uh, well, this is the, the following part. Well, uh, somebody uh, rang the bell and my husband is not here. I will play the movie and I will go into the answer uh, the door. <laughs> I'm very sorry. An education is costly. In any case, I can see no advantage to leaving you at school. So, I have a business in London, Murdstone and Grimby. Mr. Quinion, my friend, manages it for me. Mr. Quinion has suggested that since it gives employment to other boys, it can also give employment to you. Seeing that he has no other prospects. Your wages will be six shillings per week. Your lodgings, which I have arranged, will be paid for by me. In short, you're provided for and will do your duty. <laughs> Here we are, Murdstone and Grimby. We have arrived. Here lies your future, Murdstone and Grimby. Our chief business is the supply of wines and spirits for merchant ships. Come here, Mick. Here's Mick Walker. This is David Copperfield. He's to work below. Take him down and instruct him in his duties. Confidentiously, not to be repeated to Mr. Q. Oh, more fire. As soon as I'm made, I'm going to be a bargeman, like me old pa, and walk in the Lord Mayor's show in black velvet entries, like he done. Here, Mealy, what? This is Mealy Potatoes. He do have a name, but we all calls him Mealy Potatoes, because he looks like an hard-boiled spud. Do he have a name, then? Copper something. Phil. Copperfield. David Copperfield. Show him what he has to do. Whoa. Good luck, Cocky. David Copperfield. Esquire, at your service, me lords, ladies, and gentlemen. <laughs> Show us your hands. Show us your hands. <laughs> now, my lady, observe if you please. No words can express the secret agony of my soul, the sense I had of being utterly without hope, the misery it was to my young heart to know that day by day all I had learnt and thought and delighted in would pass away from me little by little. 
never to be brought back anymore. But then, in that utter darkness, came a gleam of light. <laughs> You might have some difficulty in penetrating the arcana of the modern Babylon. In short, that you might lose yourself. I am here to accompany you to my humble abode. Thank you, sir. Nina! Coming, sir. Thank Copperfield's box phone. Yes, sir. <laughs> Stop! Micawber! Stop! This way! Stop! Stop! In all ditch! Pay me! I'll have the law on you! Stop! As the top of the year, there is one great universal truth to be discovered as we journey through this veil of tears. It is this. Annually come 20 pounds, annual expenditure 19 pounds, 19 and 6. Result? Happiness. Annual income, 20 pounds. Annual expenditure, 20 pounds and six pence. Result? Come here! Let me go and pay your debt, sir! Come here! Circumstances have rendered it imperative to enter the humble abode. We will not say surreptitiously, but discreetly and circuitously. In short, by the back door. Go! Master Copperfield. I'm sure he is not. My family are of the opinion 
With a little interest, something might be done for a man of his ability in the custom house. Uh, yes. Uh, in the meantime, I, I remain confident that something will turn up. Uh, my dear, I give you Master Copperfield. You're welcome under our roof, sir. This is the finish of the, the, the sixth part of fifth part. I don't know. So, um, well, we, we ran out of time because it's nearly 11. So um, there is no time to show you the following part. No, there, there, there is a lot to, to show you, but we don't have time. Here he is uh, doing his work at the bottling house. Very, very sad, you can see. And uh, in the movie, uh, there are a lot of emotion expressed by the, the actors. Well, so I will... Uh, close my book and I leave uh, the conclusions to yours, to you. <laughs> but uh, yes. I, I don't wish to say goodbye to you because I am sure Jeshri and I were speaking yesterday and I was telling her that we should invite but uh, sometime to India so that you can come and personally teach us. Otherwise, because of Corona and the prevailing war that is going on in Ukraine, maybe traveling would be bad, but at least we can have more online sessions with you. I think all my fellow participants will agree that your way of analyzing the text, of making us look at the grammar, of telling us the figures of speech, they have been very well written and very well taught to us. So you are actually, as I said earlier, that you are a teacher's teacher. And every day that I have spent in your company, I have learned a lot. I did my PhD on Charles Dickens, and that was the book I was showing you. It's called The Dickensian Scenario. But that is only meant for postgraduate students. What you taught us is how to teach the undergraduate students also. And I find it extremely informative. And that is why my request to Jeshri is that she should conduct frequent such workshops where she could request you to explain to us certain things because we have yet to go through your entire book. You did tell me it's available on Amazon India, 
but could you tell me the title of your book yes it is called learning english with movies okay, uh, okay. learning colon, english with movies colon colon uh, the, uh, david copperfields um, apostrophe s activity book oh david copperfields activity book very yes. yeah, very just note it down so that you can you know order it from amazon learning english mm -hmm. with movies with movies yes but you can work with the pdf once you have the pdf you distribute to the students and you know you don't need to buy it um, i can I pass know. on i will pass on to you ma'am okay david copperfields Activity. Chair, chairperson is entitled for the PDF to be passed on by the workshop convener. Yes, Thank it's a gift to me to you because you are very nice people, very educated. I am very honored. I am very happy. <laughs> you can no, see actually, that when I teach this, I, I transform myself and I, I in another person. No, we are, we are honored that you have spent so much of your time with us. So do tell Jeshri the next time that you are free for a couple of days so that we can again continue our interactive sessions. Okay. It has been a pleasure yes. meeting you, so much. It could be once a week, perhaps, and we finish the book if you want. Okay. Okay, yeah. so no. you could tell us, you could tell us when, okay, and you could communicate okay. it to Jeshri, and she mm -hmm. would tell us so that we would join and complete the book. Yes, perhaps on Friday at, at this time. Especially I then, uh, it will be only your class for all the attendees, and it will be for in your craft. Means I would like to just focus on your being a central featured figure of our classes. Okay, well, thank you very much. Currently, yeah, there think, are many... Uh, yeah, I, I think, think Jeshri, that, that, is, Jeshri, that is perfectly correct. So next Friday, hopefully, we hmm. will meet Berta. Please put the timing so that Berta also, you know, remembers it and every other participant who is keen to join. Yeah, we have already so many participants, around 300 in this workshop. And if we connect them uh, to uh, to you as a central featured speaker, they will all join in that to understand your book. Yes, yes, yes. because it gets more complex as it goes uh, forward. Because in chapter 16 is the climax of the story. And there are lots of phrasal verbs there. Hmm. And you know that this uh, grammar point is very difficult for students. So you see that when you are in the in fourth year or five years of edu education of English. So the more you advance in the movie, the more complex the grammar uh, it gets or appears. Yes, it's a very <laughs> good suggestion on the part of our uh, chair, uh, Professor Jaya that we would like you to continue with your uh, whole book uh, in a week one class so that you may also uh, be a, like a trainer to uh, all and to put uh, to uh, you know carry forward your knowledge and to pay it forward extend it uh, to the world so that you know they also start preparing such books slowly and gradually so that will uh, ultimately an advantage to Lingua Franca's uh, uh, development. Yes, yes, would be yes. You're right. I agree with you. Yeah. And so thank uh, you, Marta, for, our, for my suggestion, for accepting my suggestion. And thank you, Jeshri. So, Jeshri, yes. please continue. Hmm. Sure, ma'am. And uh, Professor Becker, you can uh, you you are already in our group, and we would be definitely greeting you. Perhaps good morning, good night, and uh, you feel comfortable to connect to us uh, and uh, decide a day of a week, so that and uh, mostly evenings. I think because the uh, anti clock 
system is there uh, in India and Argentina. Uh, Anti-clock means uh, the time is opposite. So you can always say that uh, at seven o'clock uh, meeting time in the evening is the best. Seven o'clock, rather six thirty or six o'clock. You can ah, extend it, one hour late. Yes, perhaps it is ten and thirty in the morning for me. Hmm. The Argentine time. Hmm. Yes, any other true. any other thing, Berta, uh, Professor Berta, you have experienced while being with us for uh, eight uh, hours class, and that is uh, around eight days you were with us. Any other experience you felt uh, or you would like to share? Because we would be jotting down your experience with our class as a teacher. Yes, yes, because this is the first time I teach here at the university. So but I have Indians? no idea how to teach you. Have you ever taught Indians? <laughs> Indians? No, no, no. Indians, no. And at the university, no, because they were higher um, tertiary level students, not university students, the ones that uh, uh, were technicians of uh, hospitality, tourism, etc. So I, I have no idea how to teach at the university. And that's, I was thinking that day, the other day, that when I asked you to participate, you were shut up. And then I understood that because you were not my regular students that I have. I was teaching you as if you were my regular students, but you are doctors, you are, you know, much more than me. So the, the, it was difficult how to teach you. Idea, but this is an experience I had. So, uh, we also have this wonderful experience of being your students. <laughs> There's one participant, she is Jyoti Sareen. Jyoti Sareen, can you come on screen? Please uh, uh, turn on your camera so that our Professor Bharta could uh, have a look of you. Yes, Jyoti Hello, ma'am. Hello. Hello, yes. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to share my experience the same. It becomes very difficult to, to teach to the ones, to the grown-ups, like in our compulsory classes. It becomes very difficult how to teach them. Uh, I want the experience of Joya ma'am also. And you people also might be feeling at the university level that uh, it is easy to teach in the literature classes, but very difficult to teach the compulsory classes the way Berta ma'am is doing activities for we ourselves become uh, bored how to continue how to make the classes interesting it becomes very difficult how to teach to the grown-ups who have i think Berta ma'am is uh, understanding me yes of course um, for me well, is the contrary. i find more easy to teach to adult to uh, because they pay more attention, they they want okay. for his or her work. Uh, they need English, so they are more attentive. And the children, it's very difficult for me to teach children because they are talking a lot all the time. You have to make them quiet, and you lose a lot of time. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. That's a very different approach. Thank you. I, I always thought that the very way, um, the most uh, beautiful way to teach is by movies. Because yes. this, uh, the way you caught their attention, because they like uh, colors, they like movement, they like the music that is behind the soundtrack. Through technology. Yes, ma'am. Through technology, it's now interesting and easy, I think. Otherwise, in compulsory classes, it becomes the people will share same thing. I think they will be feeling that it's very difficult to teach in those classes. Thank you. That's a new approach through movies and uh, that they have uh, more attention to the grown-ups. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Thank you. One last question, ma'am. How much time did you take to complete this book? <laughs> three years <laughs> three years because I got stuck in a moment when my husband told me they are going to sue you 
legally, legally because you are uh, using a movie that you haven't made and other people has done the movie uh, and perhaps they are going to sue you but so i stopped writing it and i was very depressed and then i thought i i, I had an idea and i thought if they took the movie from the internet, it is public domain. I won't be sued for anything because I am not selling the movie. I am telling them, I am giving them the link, and they by themselves are taking the movie and watching the movie. From that part to that part to continue that way studying. So I am uh, taking uh, media uh, but I am not uh, selling it. Only, oh. only my book. Any other and person? Russia, or... Can I just tell you that under the Intellectual Property Right Act, you cannot be sued because you are using your material for academic progress. Okay. Exactly. So yes. the question, when things are in the public domain, then no one can sue. Like when uh, Jayashree puts these things in the public domain, then no one can be sued because it is open access. Okay. And exactly. it is accessible. The area network will access and present it to you. And yes. uh, intellectual property right of which we are also party to it says that for academic work you can use material okay yes so that was yes. just as an aside and basically yes. you know your 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 book has now been peer reviewed by so many attendees so and so many attendees have shown their uh, good participation even uh, they have uh, liked and they have given you so many comments so these are all samples of your being reviewed. So when we uh, finally would be webcasting through YouTube channel of uh, ours, uh, of mine or of whatever a channel I've got, or if you uh, channelize it through your channel, uh, YouTube, then you can't be sued because everybody is reviewing it in a way because you have presented for discussion. Exactly, yes. I am not making money from it because I am uh, giving away it to you. So You're just no, spreading mouth to mouth the uh, pedagogy. No of, for me. Hmm. Anybody yes, else want to say something? You're spreading knowledge. You are spreading knowledge. You're not making money. Okay? Exactly. Uh, Ma'am, I would like to wish you all a very wonderful good morning very auspicious uh, sorry good evening because it is the uh, very concluding day of this uh, uh, fruitful and very radiant learning week long session i have never faced such a uh, experience before so i am very overwhelmed and obliged and uh, i would like to request uh, dr jayashree ma'am to organize such a, uh, webinars and uh, week-long sessions or uh, offline programs again so that uh, people like me or I should say especially me I can learn more in the company of all the eminent and uh, prolific people like uh, Zoya ma'am and uh, 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 Argentine blue stocking <laughs> Madam Berta and you uh, lady icon Dr. Jeshri because you know we ha we will follow you then only we can uh, reach somewhere otherwise we are quite clueless people uh, like uh, uh, you all join me in linkedin see you can all <laughs> join with me in linkedin okay. and there you uh, will find a very good uh, uh, we say, platform where you can interact with not only me but you can come across with a lot of you know academicians and creative writers and in this way, you can uh, have access to disseminate knowledge only not with our uh, field of uh, research. Mm. Uh, even you can come in contact to yeah. develop your network. So uh, be there. Uh, okay. I will be following you. Thank you, ma'am. This is so, really Rami, my pleasure. Any, anything you want to say? Uh, 
no, no, no. That I, I'm very happy. I, I'm honored, and I continue doing this for free because I don't want to be sued. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I would uh, just like, first of all, uh, Bertha Ma'am, uh, Bunos Dias. Um, I, I didn't understand that. What did I you say? I guess it was a Spanish word for good morning. Uh, so, okay. yes, the Spanish. Good evening to all the members here. I would mm -hmm. say it's been so enlightening and such a nice session. Uh, like David Copperfield, if I would have read the original play, I would have got bored within 10 sentences of it. And I will, uh, you know, I, I can say that very truly that I would have got bored of it. But the way Bertha Ma'am told us, it became so, so engrossing. And every day I used to wait. When will the next uh, movie come up? When will the small clip come up? And when will we answer? The best part was being interactive because, you know, uh, 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 there is always a child in every one of us. And yeah. that inquisitive child, he waits. Somebody will ask me and enthusiastically we'll answer, we'll discuss, we'll get to know more sides and more patterns of what is being taught, how it is being taught. And uh, the way Bertha ma'am taught us, actually, uh, when I used to teach before my marriage, I used to teach in the same way. So it brought back all my old days. And I was so happy. And I used to wait. And now I am, uh, you know, I'm left on my toes that when, what will happen next? Now either I have to read the book or I'll have to wait for Bertha ma'am. Yes, okay. <laughs> It is a uh, student center, not teacher center, because the students have to interact and has to speak and has to raise ideas, uh, critical thinking. Yes, it's a uh, student center. This is uh, uh, the approach. Ma I will definitely be waiting for your next sessions. I am in. <laughs> yes, Professor Beta, we don't want to leave you today. We want from everybody one one single at least two sentences. Deepika, where are you? Achha, Deepika where? is at some uh, you know holy shrine visit, and she said that she cannot turn on camera. Deepika Sahu. Deepika. So okay, um, we'll meet uh, Professor Bhatia. Uh, this is today is Friday. You can get, take time next Friday. I'll be available. But only thing is, you tell me on Saturday, uh, Thursday. So that I can circulate among all crowd uh, about your class. Yes, yes, yes. You can set it the time and day, and mm -hmm. I, I'll be there for you. Okay. Thank <laughs> On you. Friday, next Friday. Thank you, ma'am, for organizing all. You're this. welcome. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, ma'am. Also. Bye, bye. Thank you, ma'am. Bye, bye. Thank you, ma'am. 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 Thank you,